Welcome back to Art Talk with your artist, Kevalon. And you're in the Art Attack studio right now. Today, our discussion is going to be about Mr. Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby is a stand up comedian, an American stand up comedian. He's an actor a musician and an author and now unfortunately he's a convicted sex offender after 14 years they say in two trials they finally got Bill Cosby because they really wanted Bill I believe they really wanted Bill and not just the ladies that are, you know, after him for what he's done to them, allegedly. Now, Bill was led away in handcuffs at 81 years old to the state pen. According to CNN, the judge sentenced Cosby to 3 to 10 years. in state prison for drugging and sexually assaulting Andrea Constant 14 years ago which some would say is a long time ago but then again some would say there is no time frame for molestation because molestation is something that sticks with you I could imagine because of something physical and then that becomes mental afterwards I'm almost sure because I fell off a ladder one time I never forgot that and that was physical for me so should I make him smiling or what but anyway there's no time frame on that probably I would imagine especially for the ladies that are involved that's not real the time frame is not real for them the reality for them is that they got raped they got abused he saw a side of them they did not want to share with them according to them so now Bill Cosby was America's father figure he was sentenced by a Pennsylvania judge named Steve O'Neill to three to ten years and the judge explained that state prison for Bill Cosby would be mandatory state prison would be mandatory for Bill Cosby due to the nature of his crimes so because it was a sexual assault and due to the nature of how he assaulted the ladies or this lady because they're dealing with one person in this case right now I think now they're saying that that was a violent crime and that you know he drugged the lady which made it violent I think that's the part they're considering as violence is that he drugged them and he removed their clothing and stuff like that against their will they woke up to the situation some of them you know and this lady in particular he drugged her and she just you know she's been fighting him for years in court battling this situation for a very long time I mean 14 years ago is a long time ago for this to have happened to her and she's been concerned and acting on it ever since then probably about a year later she according to uh, the information about a year after 
was when she legally pursued this. And in 2015 was when they first arrested Bill for the situation. So that's when he went to criminal court during that time frame. And the civil suit, they lost the case. It was a hung jury. It was a hung jury that time. So Bill kind of got off and he was free. So it didn't seem like anything was going to happen to Bill at that point. But people didn't know, you know, the law and all of that. A lot of people, they're just fans like me. So we're not lawyers or anything, so we don't really know. But the judge deemed it mandatory for Bill in this case to go to state prison. Now, Bill Cosby is 81 years old. 81. Now in a state prison, Bill is gonna be food to these people in the state prison. You know, allegedly he's worth 40, $400 million. $400 million. Yeah, they're gonna have to put him in private security or something. <laughs> <laughs> Bill is going to have to be in protective custody, man, in my opinion. But from what I understand, he might be in general population. And especially according to my man Star from Star in the Morning, from the Snitch Network. Check that out on YouTube, the Snitch Network. It's hot. If you like com comedians and you like comedy, but a little information mixed in with your comedy, then Star is your man. Star will have you cracking up. But anyway, back to Bill Cosby. Mr. Bill Cosby. Now, after the judge said it's mandatory for him to go to state prison, Bill Cosby, they say, tensed up, you know, a little bit. And he was holding on to his wooden cane with both hands, they say. With both hands, he was holding on to this cane. And a lot of people made reference to that, and they made a big deal about that. Like CNN, they kept saying that over and over, like he was holding on to this cane. And it's nothing wrong with him holding on to his cane. But, you know, they made an issue out of it because they want him to seem nervous. Because he never spoke in the court. He refused to speak. He actually said to the judge that there's no need to rediscuss that again. You know, he doesn't really want. Oh, Bill is coming in the room now. He doesn't really want to discuss it again. Just do what you got to do, pretty much. That's what he was kind of saying with his actions and his words. He was like, let's get it over with, or whatever. So Bill, his defense attorneys requested to free Cosby during the appeal process. And the judge, Stephen O'Neill, told them 20 minutes later, that a, a bail wouldn't be appropriate for Mr. Cosby. It just wouldn't be right to give Mr. Cosby bail at this point. So I think they wanted to get him right in the jail. So then, after that, the sheriff's deputies escorted Mr. Cosby out of the courthouse. Now, People made a point to say again, at that point he had his hands, both hands, on his wooden cane. 
Now see how his eyes look? You have to do Bill's eyes like that. One of them is real cocked or something. So you have to really accentuate that a little bit because it's in the original photo. And that's how he looks right now at 81, I guess. So, um, so with his bail revoked and refused, they refuse to give him bail and denied by Judge O'Neill. His bail was denied by Judge O'Neill of Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. He said Mr. Cosby will be classified as a sexually violent predator. Sexually violent predator. Now, that was a long time ago. I'm sure his mind has changed since then. But even if he was a sexually violent predator, he's not now. And not that that has anything to do with what he did in the past, because, you know, people have past, people have history, and things like that. So, but him being a sexually violent predator would require him to have a lifetime registration and lifetime mandatory counseling and community notification so the people living in the community with him wherever he moves to they would have to know that he's a sexual predator and he lives in their neighborhood I'm sure some of you may have heard of that before that whole system of sexual predators and them having to alert you when they move to your neighborhood that's only fair because it could happen again you never know and if you didn't know that they were there it could easily happen then so so now Mr. Cosby was issued a $25,000 fine by the court and also he has to pay the prosecution costs so they really stuck it to Bill Bill they trying to wipe his money out man you know and that's how people do legally so I'm gonna make him frown a little more because they taking this man's money like crazy left and right so he got a frown right here but anyway Mr. Cosby was booked into Montgomery County Correctional Facility. I thought Montgomery County was only in Maryland, but either way, because I used to live in Montgomery County. But in the evening, he was transferred to Pennsylvania State Correctional Institute at Phoenix. Now, Phoenix is a jail in Pennsylvania and I was watching on CNN they filmed the inside of the jail you might want to check it out they have a good video of the interior of the jail now I have to do his moles because you know Bill as we all know he had these moles has rather and I'm not going to make him look like Howdy Doody or anything, but I'm going to give him a little moles so that we can kind of keep it real over here. Now Marlon Wayans said if Bill is guilty and he really did it, and you know he's a comedian, Marlon, he said that if he's guilty, they should pluck these moles slowly off his eyes with some tweezers or pliers or something and just pull them slow off his eyes that's quite a torture right there I wouldn't I wouldn't wish that on anybody you know that boy is I mean, he's violent to say that but anyway and that wasn't funny so out of dozens of women that came forward in this situation Andrea Constant 
was the only one who met the statute of limitations. Everyone else was outside the statute of limitations. So therefore they couldn't they couldn't take Bill to court. They just have to live with their situation. Which is, you know, kind of crazy. But either way, the time frame is so huge. It was so long ago. And let's talk about destroying Bill Cosby's legacy now. How this lady is single-handedly destroying his legacy with this case. Now, when you look at her being a Temple University employee, Temple University is in Philadelphia, and we know Bill Cosby is from Philadelphia. He's known to be in Philly for years and years and years. So, he was a Temple trustee at the college. And this lady, Miss Constant, she was an employee at the college, at Temple University. So him being a trustee, he's like a mentor. And she said he was her friend, which maybe explains why they spent personal time, because she trusted him as a friend. And then she says he poisoned her drink. And then he sexually assaulted her as a result. He was a mentor, friend, and he abused his power and her trust in him, she said, according to Miss Constant. Bill Cosby took my beautiful, healthy young spirit and crushed it, she said. And that's a deep statement, especially to a court of law. Because emotions play in a case like this. Emotions play a big role in a case like this. So you have the jury and you have the judge and everybody's emotional about the situation because it's bad to drug somebody and sexually assault them. That's terrible. So one thing she said in, when in her testimony, when she testified, she said, Dr. Huxtable raped me. And that, that tells me that she really wasn't looking at him as Bill Cosby at that point. She was such a fan that she looked at him still as Dr. Huxtable. And we we well know, we all know that that's from the Cosby show. So she must have watched a lot of TV in her time for her to think that Bill Cosby is still Dr. Huxtable. And a lot of times people stick these stars with their roles that they played before. And this is another case of that. So I've heard people say, don't call me the name in interviews. They were saying to, to the people when they, when they meet them somewhere, don't call me that name of that role that I played. Please call me by my real name. And you know, people like Ice Cube and Chris Tucker and different people who played roles, they're like, don't call me Day Day. Don't call me Doughboy. Don't call me those names, you know, that I played before. But really, that's what made you. You know, those are things that made you. So, but in this case, she is mentally making him into this character and, and keeping him there. He's locked into that status in her mind. <laughs> so she's a huge fan, which makes it even triply and heavily disappointing to people when the, peer, the person that they look up to does something really wrong like that. Now, 
when she said Dr. Huxtable took advantage of her in the court, that was during the testimony when she was really uh, reading a letter that she wrote. And this letter was five pages, and she wrote it to the court. And in those five pages, she was saying how she she was molested and set up and you know the Temple University information was in there about her being an employee and him being a trustee and all that stuff so one thing that stuck out to me that she said in there was when she said that Dr. Huxtable took advantage of me, sexually assaulted me, rather. But Judge Stephen O'Neill of Pennsylvania, Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, that is, he said that when he read that letter, that was the biggest part of his decision to give Mr. Cosby jail time so that letter really put the nail in the coffin in terms of Mr. Bill Cosby now if you feel that this lady was past the statute of limitations or in your mind then feel free to mention it in the comments if you have any positive or negative comments about this, then feel free to mention it in the comments below. If you want me to teach you how to airbrush like this, then feel free to mention it in the comments below and we'll figure out how we can put together a class for you because it's real easy to do. We're gonna, um, we can connect with you real easy and it's not a problem. I do all of this based on donations and things like that. I need art equipment and all kinds of things. So I just wanted to put that out there. And my PayPal, also my PayPal is Kevalone, K-E-V-A-L-O-N-E, at gmail.com. And I know you see how this airbrush is flowing, how it's cooperating. It's a very nice airbrush, but it's not expensive. And I can show you ways to save money on your art equipment. You get deals and things like that. You have to catch sales. I'm a little cheap, so I know where to go. And I'm not playing, as you can see. So, again, my name is Kevin Lone. Welcome back to Art Talk. And I hope you all have a blessed day. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope it informs you that you shouldn't drug anybody and meet people the normal way, like at a dating site or at the laundromat or something or the library or wherever you go in real life, the supermarket or something, you know, something normal, okay? Don't put no molly in nobody's 40 ounce or nothing crazy like that. Alright, I'm Kevin Long, and I'll see y'all on the next one. This is Art Talk.